Hello and welcome to a new edition of I Speak Electric. Today we're looking at myths. Let's do some myth busting. Now we've all chatted to someone about our electric car and they've told us things like, well, those things are worse for the environment than my trusty old diesel that I'll run into the ground. Or maybe they'll ask how long it takes to replace the battery when it runs out every two years. So let's kick on and have a look at our top five myths about electric vehicles. Welcome to the channel, my name is Martin Lee. If you like what we do here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. Number one, if we all switch to EVs, the grid will melt. Well, you can kind of see how people think this is the case. Millions of EVs driving around all day, then, we all get home at the same time and plug our cars in. But it's just not the case. Let's take a look at where I am in the UK as an example. Back in 2002, peak demand on the electricity grid was 62 gigawatts. It's since lowered to below 50 gigawatts more recently. Now, the National Grid, the company that takes care of our electric grid here, has stated that even if there was an overnight switch to EVs, the very people that run the grid here have said the peak would rise by about 10%. That increase would still fall well below the peaks we were seeing before we all had more efficient appliances at home and we're using, like I have in here, LED lights around us. We've made so many changes to our lives with more efficient use of electricity that moving to EV won't be a problem. In fact, the national grid here has said that EVs will actually help them balance the grid. They're working on smart metering and increased renewables. That situation is going to get even better when our cars can soak up that energy when it's being generated by the sun and the wind and using it when we need it. So that's the first myth busted. It's a win-win all round. Number two, EVs send emissions elsewhere. It's another one that you can understand people believing because it sounds like it should be true even though it's not. Instead of burning fuel in the car's engine, all you're doing is burning the fuel somewhere else and using electricity in your car. But when you think about it, it doesn't stack up. Let's look at a typical combustion engine burning petrol or diesel. They are, give or take, around 20% efficient. And by that I mean that only about 20% of the energy released and burned from those fossil fuels actually goes in to moving the car forward. And that's if you've got a really efficient car. And you can imagine that figure being even lower in stop-start rush hour traffic. On the other hand, an electric motor is over 80% efficient, at least four times better, and often much more. Furthermore, international research by Bloomberg New Energy Finance has shown that emissions from electric vehicles were at 40% lower than their combustion counterparts. But that figure, as we transition towards more renewables, is increasingly favourable. Indeed, some people with solar on their roof manage to power their cars and houses with 100% renewable energy. Now, there are some countries around the world that have moved to green energy and there are some that are laggards and still using natural gas, using coal. Those are increasingly rarities though, as much of the world moves towards renewables. Number three, the batteries only last five minutes and then they go into landfill. Well, here's another one that you can see how people believe when they're told it. We're used to the batteries in our phones and our laptops really starting to struggle after, what do you reckon, two or three years, you start to notice your laptop slow down or your phone doesn't last as long as when it was new. And that must be the same for cars, right? Mm, wrong. All you can do with those phones is recycle them or your new laptop battery perhaps arrives and you get it fitted. But let's start with something EVs have that you don't get in phones and laptops and that is a very sophisticated battery management system. That system looks after the battery and protects it from the degradation that you typically see in your phone. It does a few different things and each system is slightly different. Firstly, it limits the high and low end that the battery can charge or discharge to. To use the Nissan LEAF 30 kilowatt hour battery as an example, we call it the Nissan LEAF 30, but really you only get to use 26.5 kilowatt hours of what is in that battery. The rest is kept as a buffer to protect it. And in fact, it's not as if there's a certain amount of storage and you only get a certain amount of it. What we're actually talking about here is cell voltage, but we won't go into that right now. Many of the newer EVs have active thermal management to make sure the battery 
stays at optimal temperature. Have you noticed when you really fast charge your laptop or phone, it can get really, really hot. Maybe you're playing a game or watching a video on your phone and you can feel how hot it is in your hands. That's because there's no active thermal management of your phone. It harms the battery, those extremes of temperatures. Of course, in an EV, the battery's too expensive to do that to. So perhaps it's air cooling or increasingly liquid active thermal management to ensure the battery stays cool and you don't degrade it. There's a long list of features of the BMS we won't go into today, but trust me, it's looking after your battery, so your battery lasts a long time. Let's look at practical examples. Tesla has released data that shows the vast majority of their cars have over 90% of their battery health after 100,000 miles driven. So, if you had a Tesla with a 300 mile range at new, it still gets 270 miles when you've done 100,000 miles of driving. And let's not forget, that car has had a lot less maintenance over that period of time. The fact is that EV batteries are holding up much better than anyone expected a few years ago. And the resilience of these batteries is still improving. We're now at a stage where the battery is likely to outlast the rest of the car by many, many years. When the car is being recycled because it's just rust, let's look at where the battery goes. Well, maybe second life storage in a home or a business or providing resilience to the grid. But we have to move on from this landfill myth. Let's be really pessimistic for a moment and say that your 2013 Nissan Leaf, that's a pretty old EV if you have one of those, it's eight years old, maybe it's done 100,000 miles or more, and it's got 75% of its battery left. That's still a car that'll do 60 miles. There's no way it's going to go to landfill. That's more than enough for people to use, if not as a long distance driver, certainly as a daily driver, maybe as a second car as well. And even if nobody wanted to buy it, you can get the battery upgraded to a newer pack that'll last another 10 years. But even when EV batteries get to a level where they're just not practical in the car anymore, they can be taken out and used for second life storage. They'll make a great account of themselves for many years to come. At that stage, the batteries don't go to landfill. Even today, recycling programs are well above 90% of materials recouped. The only issue to date is the batteries are lasting so long, the industry hasn't really got a chance to scale up recycling programs because of the low supply of used batteries. Number four, EVs are slow. They're all milk floats, right? Well, no, let's do this myth very quickly. Only a few weeks ago, the 2000 horsepower Rimac Navara, which was otherwise known as the C2, was unveiled. And we've seen it on test strips, on runways, even on public roads as prototype cars with the likes of Formula One champion Nico Rosberg behind the wheel. And even without a launch control or access to all of its power in those development vehicles, doing a quarter mile in under nine seconds, not to 62 miles an hour, not to 100 kilometers an hour, in less than two seconds. The Tesla Model S performance from the last few years will outpace pretty much every supercar on the planet to 100 kilometers an hour, and that's before they release the upcoming Plaid Plus version. Even take a modest Leaf E Plus. That'll go not to 62 miles an hour, not to 100 k's, in 7.3 seconds. That's faster than pretty much most two litre saloon cars of a similar size. No, EVs are not slow. Number five, it takes ages to charge an EV. This last myth we'll bust is perhaps true of EVs at the very beginning, maybe going back eight or 10 years. There may have been an element of truth about that years ago, but not anymore. It also uses an outdated way of thinking about how we move around. You see, you shouldn't compare a combustion car and the behavior of owning an electric one in all cases. Firstly, if you have a home charger and you arrive back in the evening from work, most home chargers will give you seven kilowatts of power, but you wouldn't charge straight away because you might be on an electricity tariff that is cheaper overnight. So maybe you'll plug it in, but you'll delay the charge. So if you have a 64 kilowatt hour Kona, then your battery will go from completely empty to completely full by the next morning quite easily. But think about it in a different way. How long have you personally spent charging a car? Most people spend ah, two to three seconds. It's called plugging it in. And the next morning, you unplug it. That's a few seconds to fully fill your car to do three, four, five hundred kilometers. 
not much time of your day, is it? But let's say you're on a longer road trip. You're doing a 600 kilometer journey in, uh, let's say a Kia e-Nero. You set out with a full battery and you could possibly do this trip on one hour long break for lunch and a quick charge. If it's winter and your range drops, there's maybe some elevation and it's cold, maybe two stops and a couple of 40 minute charges enough to get you there. If you're taking a Tesla Model 3 in long range, you'll easily make the trip with a single stop at a V3 supercharger in less time as you take to pop into the services, grab a coffee and get out again. And let's face it, if you had a combustion car, would it be comfortable and safe to do a six, eight or 10 hour road trip without stopping? No, of course you can't. And of course you wouldn't want to do that as well for your own safety. And finally, a bit of a silly one as a bonus myth, you can't drive in the rain and you can't charge in the rain, no. Just no. Hey, think about it. EV batteries exist, most of them around 400 volts, some of them are 800 volts, but either way, if you came into contact with that, it's gonna give you a very bad day. Car makers can't risk any kind of safety, so from day one of designing the earliest of EVs, safety was the number one priority. Batteries are sealed, there are many fail safes in place, and no, you cannot electrocute yourself plugging in an EV in the rain, which of course you can do, everything is safe. I even have a friend who lives in a flood zone and the river burst its banks and the car was flooded. Above it, I would say wheel arches, wading depth, if you like. It wasn't completely submerged. The level of the water came just under the level of the battery vent. And because it's all sealed, it was absolutely fine. He dried the car out and whereas combustion cars were wrecked and had to go to landfill to be recycled, the CV was absolutely fine, kept on going. So hopefully you've taken something away from today's show. It was tough to condense it down for a short video like this. There's so much misinformation out there. It can seem like we're fighting an uphill battle sometimes, but let us know what you think in the comments below about the myths we have busted today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what we do, give us a thumbs up down there and we'll know to make more shows just like this. And we'll see you on the next one.